savages. Nelson Mandela said that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers the fear. I want to talk to you about courage today, being courageous in life, because I fear it is something we are losing in our society. When we think of courage, we seem to always focus on the physical side of things. And although that is extremely important, courage is important in every aspect of our lives. Being courageous is a very important attribute of a peaceful savage. Courageous, reckless, or just plain stupid can sometimes get blurred. Courage is not the lack of fear by any means. Courage is the ability to put your fear aside while you take care of business. You know, courage is not something you're always born with. Like anything, it may come easier for some than others, but regardless, it is not an excuse for lack of it. You can cultivate courage in your life. And I wanna share with you three steps I believe will help you practice courage throughout your daily life. Step one, I want you to run scenarios through your head. Every scenario you can think of. When I, when I talk about this, I mean both physical altercations and decisions of morality. What are you going to stand for? Where is your line in the sand? I want you to figure it out now. Take the decision process out of the equation when it comes time to act. Will you take a stand when something violates your moral code? Will you stand up for a stranger when they need help? Are you willing to put yourself in harm's way to protect someone who can't protect themselves? Run these scenarios through your head and make the decision now. Step two, welcome failure. When we're talking life and death, failure is not so much an option. <laughs> That I, that I consider at least, and I hope you don't either. However, outside of life and death situations, we have to stop being so scared of failure. Everyone is so dang scared of failure that they consider inaction a more viable option. If you truly weigh the cost of inaction in your life, you would discover that failure is a much better option. Prepare against it, of course, but know that failure, more times than not, is part of the process. And if you're not willing to fail, here's the truth. You don't have what it takes to win. If you're so scared of failure that you choose an action over action, you do not have what it takes to win. Step three, experience. There's no substitute for it. And just like Nelson Mandela said, sometimes you just have to put yourself in it. You have to put yourself in the situation because once you do, and you realize your fear is unfounded, the next time it will be easier for you to act. If you're listening to this and you've never been tested, you don't know how you would act, I suppose. I guess no one ever really knows until they're put into the position. So you're put in that position where courage is required of you, but you can make a decision now. You can run scenarios through your head now. You can tell yourself that regardless of the situation, I will go in. I will do what's right. I will stand up for what I believe in. I will protect those who cannot protect themselves. I know that oftentimes I take a perspective from a law enforcement position due to my experience. And I know not everyone has that experience, but I believe it goes much deeper than our law enforcement, our police, military, sheriff's deputy, whatever it is. I believe that this is a responsibility of every able-bodied person especially you men. You have no right to be a coward. You have no right to stay quiet and do nothing when someone else is in need. It is disgusting, and you should be ashamed of yourself if that's your mindset. I recently was watching the news, and it wasn't too long ago, there was a man who assaulted and attempted to rape a woman in broad daylight in New York City. People filmed, people walked by, people said nothing, lots of people, before someone with some morals said, this is not happening. Would you have been that person? Or would you have been the people filming or walking by? You know, there's this belief that it's none of my business if it doesn't affect me. Where the hell did that come from? The devil himself, perhaps? Uh, peaceful savages, both men and women, are the type of people that say, anytime someone is in need, it is my business. When things violate my code, when things disrupt the fabric of morality, I'm there. Going back to physical altercations, I'm not naive and I hope you're not either. If you never train, never shoot, never work out, when it is your time to be the protector, when evil pokes its ugly face and you are the only thing that stands between the innocent, you will not instantly become some well-trained Navy SEAL. You need to train both mentally and physically. Get in the gym, get your hands on some weapons, take some self-defense classes at minimum. 
It's much easier to act with bravery when you trust yourself and you have confidence in your abilities. I've said it before. You show me a spotless, shiny, unscratched, everyday carry gun, I will show you someone who cannot shoot. Courage can be learned. If you make the conscious decision, get the training you need, run the scenarios through your head, your confidence will be boosted and so will your courage. I encourage you now, please, take action now before courage is required of you. Stay savage.